to Vocal Stod, the City Skyline series that is increasingly just doing its own thing, just kind of making it up as we go, I suppose. Hi, folks. I'm Jeremy, and uh, this week we got a um, we got an episode for you that's uh, largely from my own imagination. Um, there's some elements of real things from Amsterdam here, uh, but for the most part, uh, I'm just kind of riffing here. It's not really. Um, not really anything in particular. It kind of feels a bit like um, like Anno 1800, uh, that video game. Uh, I've never played it, but I've watched a lot of Let's Plays of it and stuff. Um, but yeah, basically what we're doing here, uh, I am back on the west side of the city now, uh, where I haven't been in you know quite a while, really. Um, we're here kind of transitioning the old city center to a couple of different places that I have built. Basically what we're, where we're at right now is kind of, in my opinion, the, the real, uh, meat of this game, uh, at least the way that I play it, um, is you, you, once you get past a certain point in your city, you have to start making creative decisions because scale wise, you're never going to have a city that's as big as a real city. You're always going to hit limits before you can do that. And that's just a fact. Um, so you have to make decisions about scaling and you have to try to force perspective in such a way as to make your city look at least plausible at the scale that it's at, right? So at some point or another, you have to say like, okay, this expan- this era of expansion is over and now we're on to the next era of expansion. And basically what I'm saying is you have to find creative ways to um, transition between the different eras of development of your city and the different types of neighborhoods in your city in order to make things look smooth and make things look right. And so in this case, we're at a collision point here in this corner of the map where kind of directly to the uh, to the right of screen right now is an area I built uh, a while back that's sort of like a, um, you know, early 20th century uh, sort of social housing boom area, right? And uh, directly across the canal from here is the old town. And then kind of directly to the left of what we're viewing right now is the industrial area that I kind of messed with a little while back. And uh, what you need to do then is find a way. Oh, and and, and also to the right of here is a super modern, um, you know, uh, 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 artificial island that I built way, way back in the beginning of the series. And basically what you have to do is find a way to transition between these you know four different types of area um and so what i decided to do here kind of as just a you know kind of like a fictional sort of a uh um way to do that is a sort of a like late 19th century industrial boom area where you have kind of these like really old factories and um you know fairly old buildings that are like a little older than the other ones that i work with uh, but not quite as old as the old town uh, these are by the way made by the absolute legend uh sea bud um hopefully by the time this is out they are on the workshop if they're not then um you know direct all your dms to sea bud uh hit hit them up on uh on Steam and, and demand that these make it to the workshop. Uh, I have no power over when these are showing up. I have these early testers. Anyway, um, what was I saying was, uh, you know, transitioning these neighborhoods into each other, right? And this sort of fictional area that I've made up. And um, a, a big catalyst for this, actually, I was kind of just really fearful of coming back to this area for this very reason. I just didn't know what to do to, like, get these places to blend together. Um, but there are these great uh, industrial assets that were just released on the workshop, like the week that I started this episode. Um, you can kind of see them at the bottom of the screen now. They're, I think they're from New England, um, but they have the little crane on the gable. And I was like, oh, perfect. Those, those work in this sort of a setting. So I grabbed them, just started messing around with them. And um, I ended up making, I mean, you know, the the Vogelstad drinking game drink if Jeremy says that it's his favorite neighborhood he's ever made but I mean this is a really cool neighborhood I like it a lot um basically my thinking was that um you have this neighborhood here that's like it's pretty close to the city center and um you know 
that would make it kind of appealing, but then it also has two different sets of train tracks running right through the middle of it, kind of breaking it up. So it would have maybe over the over the history of the city kind of been seen as a less desirable place to live. You know, you're kind of like, you're not quite in the industrial thick of it, but you're pretty close. Um, so I think it would probably have been kind of like a largely ignored neighborhood for a very long time. And so because of that, there's not a lot of new development around here. The only things that are kind of fairly new are like, there's a couple of buildings here and there that pop up probably just because like, uh, like a building burnt down or collapsed or whatever. Um, but for the most part, it's really just these sea bud buildings, the, uh, the Oslo 1921s and, uh, that's it. That's really it. And it, it ends up looking really cool. I think it's like very consistent. It feels like a very, um, like protected neighborhood, I guess. Um, and that's kind of how I started thinking about it is that because this was like an ignored area for a long time, it became a very like neighborhoody neighborhood. Like there's not a lot of people coming in and out. It's the same families who've always lived here are still in these same buildings. And so eventually when, you know, the, the waterfront starts to modernize and the industry starts to leave the city, some decisions have to be made in this neighborhood. And I think um, based on kind of the the way that the height ends up working out of all these buildings, I think that there was some sort of really protectionist policy put in place because basically like, because this neighborhood hadn't been touched for such a long time, it ended up by sheer coincidence, really uh, ending up being one of the best preserved uh, examples of this era of development in the city. So that is all to say that uh, it looks cool and all the buildings look the same. Anyway, uh, we're going to be kind of on the west side of the city for the next couple of episodes because I really, once I made this, I just really started grooving on this idea. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this area in in the coming uh, weeks and months ahead, I suppose, uh, depending on my schedule and when I'm able to get episodes out. Um, I have at least, um, I have another one done now that I'm about to record commentary for after this assuming my son is uh, uh still asleep uh when i'm when i'm done with this episode uh, and then i have another one that i'm working on that i'm almost finished with so i i'm fairly confident really that uh i'll be able to get a couple of episodes in a row going here which would be really nice um but actually the city is getting pretty big even all things considered because i've been doing these mini builds that you've been seeing on the channel and with each of them uh you know i've been doing like a little bit of just kind of like generic building around the thing that i make just to kind of like fill in some space that i didn't really know what to do with otherwise um and actually with that in mind uh, i'm gonna show over top here a couple of spaces that i have left in the city that are just kind of empty i don't know what to do with and i want to do some sort of a mini build there and um you know Maybe if you have an idea, if something strikes you as interesting that could happen there, um, leave it in the comments below. Uh, hit me up on Discord. The Discord link is in the description. Uh, I'm definitely looking for ideas. I've done a lot of these kind of like quirky, arty buildings, but I mean, I love doing them, but my uh, my metrics do seem to suggest that uh, nobody else does. <laughs> so I'm not really sure what to do about that. Um, Generally speaking, it seems like the metrics suggest that uh, people aren't really loving the mini builds at all, uh, which is a shame, but uh, they serve a purpose and I'm probably just going to keep doing them anyway, because otherwise there's just not going to be any content on here. Um, By the way, this is interesting. I'm not sure what causes this or why, uh, but sometimes (laughs) when I take the the catenaries off of the, uh, the tracks, Uh, it makes the wires go away, and sometimes it doesn't. If anybody knows what uh, causes that, again, comments in the... I'm I'm not trying to uh, force engagement here, I promise you, uh, but really, genuinely, I have questions that I need answered. (laughs) So please uh, do leave a comment below if you know what causes that and how to fix it. It looks really stupid having the catenaries and not the overhead wires, but I uh, also don't want to spend my entire life lining up the nodes uh, to get them... Uh, where I want them. All right, folks, 
we are back and we are now on the other side of the tracks here kind of um trying to uh kind of continue the motif here it's a lot of this is a very like uh neighborhood building episode which you know if you've been following my channel for a while you know aren't always my favorite ones um luckily in this case it ends up looking really great so i don't super duper mind um but generally speaking i want to be doing you know more detailed special projects i want to be like showing you something new and interesting each time but i mean realistically speaking i'm never going to finish the city if i do that <laughs> so uh you know at some point you just got to do a uh, you know a, a city expansion episode and hopefully i can just make each neighborhood a little bit unique from each other at least to to have something different to show you and to have something different to say um that's a big struggle when you're doing these neighborhood development episodes is you're like i don't really know what to talk about um you know what 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 do i say over the same buildings being placed again uh in this case what i'm gonna say is uh i want to show you guys uh something cool that was made for me by jasper a friend of the channel uh Jasper, who you know from the workshop, um, he's been making a lot of really incredible uh, low, den low density uh, Dutch buildings and a lot of like really cool old uh, military stuff. Um, so he made this um, uh, fort for Vogelstad. It's at the far, far north end of the city at the mouth of the, uh, the river that kind of like runs into this bay at the top of the city. Um, really cool little project uh that he made i'm still trying to convince him to make a village uh for somewhere outside of the city uh, i'll let you know the progress on that process um so now we're back here and this is a sort of like you know i'm doing a lot of these like little factory areas around here these older factories and this is something that i imagine was a factory and now is like maybe some stores or something like that in like a little mall so I added sort of like a modern extension onto the side of it. And then I put this little, uh, I stole this completely wholesale from, um, uh, from the Altengrad city, uh, doing the little air bridge between them. But, uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> you can't copyright it. Um, now I'm just adding some foliage. This is something that I'm really learning about this game and about myself and about the way that I play. I constantly am getting to a point in a build where I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Is this really working? Is this any good? Do I really enjoy this anymore? And then I put down trees and I'm like, oh yeah, I love it actually. <laughs> it seemingly is every single time I'm like, uh, uh, you know, you, cause stuff looks so bad when it's just the buildings and it's just the roads. Um, it's the reason why after, you know, I built that park a couple episodes ago and I built all that grid work out you know, it's like I told you, I, I something about seeing a big blank canvas just like absolutely destroys me. And uh, so I have not gone back there and I don't know when I'm going to go back there because I just like it just psychs me out to see. So anyway, uh, this is cool. This like old water tower here. It's maybe not the most uh, realistic positioning for it, but I'm not really sure where a water tower would realistically go. So. I don't know, but it looks really cool and I've always wanted to place it and I've always wanted something to do with it. Um, so yeah, now I'm kind of like making these little plazas around basically, you know, in the spirit of this idea that I was talking about earlier, where this was kind of like a neglected and ignored neighborhood here. Um, kind of making it so there's like not really parks around here, but there is a lot of green space and the green space is kind of made in these sort of makeshift ways where there's like, these bits of empty concrete that maybe had some other purpose at some point uh, that somebody maybe just broke up the bricks and just planted some trees on. And so, um, yeah, it ends up being a pretty nice, like chill little area with like a lot of public space, but just none of it seems like it was like super intentional or like long-term in terms of uh, design. Um, so here I'm, extending out this sort of brickwork onto this big long sidewalk um kind of trying to make like a big nice pedestrian sort of promenade um and this is kind of this is my favorite part of the episode i think is kind of just making this big avenue it's 
a really, really big road. It's probably the the widest road in the city right now outside of the highways. Um, and I put this uh, fence on the side, which I know isn't super realistic to the Netherlands. Um, it looks like Paris, but, uh, you know, they need some protection on the side there. And uh, I really like the way it looks. So what are you going to do? And now here, this is... Um, trying to kind of match the way that I'd been doing this canal before, um, which is a bigger task than it seems. I cut out a lot of footage here. Um, this is the story of my life. I feel like I'm constantly talking about this on the show that like, I'm always, whenever you're trying to like connect an old neighbor, like a new neighborhood to an older neighborhood, you're always, uh, making up for the mistakes that you made in the past and trying to figure out what you did before and how to replicate it. Um, here I'm uh, turning all these factories into procedural objects because um, uh, in universe these aren't active uh, industrial anymore these have all been turned into housing or offices of some type or another uh, so I'm turning them into procedural objects and then I'm adding these little block services into them to make them uh, function the way that I want them to uh, and I'd highly recommend doing this by the way I brought this up on reddit to somebody recently and it absolutely blew their mind and I didn't think this was that innovative of a thing I was doing uh, but yeah if you ever want to just like have a neighborhood in your city that has like loft apartments just go ahead and turn the building into PO you don't have to actually edit it in any way you know you don't have to like do the whole ploppable Rico thing or nothing like that just you know, and I've been doing this for a long time too since even before the block services came out I was doing this with um use the one by one city yeah actually you know what this is a good tip because if you don't want to subscribe to a bunch of new assets with the block services uh there's always uh one by one um uh buildings in your vanilla assets that you just have that you're loading every time anyway uh so just clip one of those inside of it and then you've got an office inside of a uh, old factory uh and then I put this uh statue thing here it's another vanilla asset but it's like you know gotta do something with those so i was like yeah maybe it's like a like a, a worker who was like famous around here maybe it's like a union organizer or something like that so i'm trying to like do a little bit of detailing here trying to like really restrain myself on details lately just to like uh oh by the way this is i mentioned this before but like <laughs> i forgot that this area is fall um so <laughs> i had to take all those flowers out of there um, but anyway, I'm trying to rest restrain myself on detailing a lot lately, um, because, you know, the city is, uh, it's really big and <laughs> it's only getting bigger and there's a lot more residential to build. And, uh, with each of these new episodes, I keep adding, you know, f you know, 10,000 new residents to the city and the simulation is really, I mean, it's, it's starting to, starting to get to me a little bit, um, it uh i'm as of where i'm at now which is a couple episodes ahead uh we are at about like ninety thousand uh people which um you know it doesn't sound like a lot but it's like for this game's standards like i may as well be running like i may as well be like rendering 4k video my computer is like not happy with me right now um i think it's okay like i I don't know, my frame rate is fine, it's just the fan just goes absolutely bonkers. <laughs> um, so this is kind of one of the last things of the episode. I um, keep trying to find something to put in this space and I can't figure it out, so I eventually just decide to uh, put a little like uh, a little electrical thing for the trains here. I don't know how any of this stuff works, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a train guy, really. Um... But, uh, yeah, so now just kind of finishing this bit out and um, doing a little bit of final detailing on the street. Um, so I'm going to take this opportunity to say thank you so much for watching my show and for supporting me through all this time. And uh, I know I'm not posting episodes as much as I used to, but hopefully, you know, the episodes that are coming out are good enough that you're, you're enjoying them. Um, you know, if you do obviously like subscribe hit the bell like all that stuff you know all the buttons that you gotta hit hit all the buttons for me would you because it helps people find the channel and it helps me not get completely destroyed by making these uh, mini episodes it's really my discoverability on this platform is just absolute dog shit now so um yeah please like subscribe all that good stuff 
thank you for tuning in. Uh, follow me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Thunder. Uh, join my Discord. The link is in the description. And I think that's all I wanted to say. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.